Hello everybody, Old School Games Nam here, and today we are doing a refresher course for old school players returning and have perhaps forgotten a few things about Diablo, and also an orientation for anybody who is new to Diablo. First off, you may be wondering about your skills and your stat points. Will it be possible to reset those at some point? Yes, it absolutely will be. Uh, Akara will help you with that after completing her first quest in Act 1. She'll help you with that a total of three times for each of the difficulty levels, Nightmare, Normal, and Hell. And beyond that, it is possible to reset your stats and skills as well by farming the uh, correct items. I'll make a special video on that later. But uh, basically, you don't need to worry too much about perfecting your character straight off the bat. Uh, if you're a really old Diablo player, you may remember a time when no resets existed whatsoever. And uh, yeah, if you're coming back from that long ago, be aware that there are now the options to reset your character. Speaking of character, on your character stats, you'll see a few options here. Strength, Dexterity, Vitality, and Energy. Strength is good for increasing damage of melee weapons. It's also good for wearing equipment. Uh, as a spellcaster, you'll want to equip enough strength to be able to wear the items that you want to wear. Otherwise, you won't really need it too much. As a melee character, it'll be more important. Dexterity affects your attack rating, and your attack rating affects your chance to hit things. This is kind of important for melee and, uh, and Amazon classes. Uh, vitality affects how much health, how, how much life you have, rather. One point of vitality equals two points of life. Energy is the same for mana. One point of energy equals two points of mana. Defense, of course, is your ability to avoid being hit. It doesn't reduce your damage, but it just affects your chance of being hit by, hit by a melee attack, attack period. Uh, if you're hit by a magical attack, your resistance is what counts. Uh, your resistance number here is actually a representative of percent. So 75 means 75% 75 resistance. So you will, if you take 100 damage from a magical attack, it will be reduced down to 25 damage in the case of having 75 resistance. On the topic of resistance, each difficulty will increase your natural uh, resistance penalty. So in Act 1, you will have no resistance penalty. And sorry, by Act 1 I mean difficulty normal. Uh, in difficulty nightmare you will have a minus 20 to your resistance penalty, and in hell difficulty you'll have a minus 50 to your resistance penalty. Now, it becomes very important to have strong resistances in when you get into hell. Uh, well, that is a separate video in and of itself, so we won't talk about that here. But super duper brief to help with your resistances, you'll want to look out for diamonds, flawless diamonds or perfect diamonds, and you can drop those into a shield to increase your resistances, a shield with open sockets. Uh, three will be the maximum open sockets that you can get up until the monarch shield, which has four open sockets, but that's kind of an end game item. Uh, for paladins, that's a little bit different. Paladins can have four socket shields of a differing variety, but for other characters, it is the uh, it is the three socket shield that you'll be looking at. And if you drop in three perfect diamonds, it will increase your resistances by 57 uh, percent. Uh, the other thing you can look at might be a little bit easier to get than three perfect diamonds is the Ancient's Pledge rune word. This requires only Ral, Ort, and Tal, and you'll actually be given those runes at the end. Oh no, kind of at the beginning of Act five as a quest reward so you can drop those into a shield and they give you a nice big 48 48 48 and 43 to your resistance so pretty darn good if you have any trouble finding an open three socket shield talk to farah in act in act two normal difficulty and she will sell a variety of armor and equipment helms that can have sockets armor that can have sockets shields that can have sockets here's a nice one here uh, and so that's just a nice easy way to get an open socket shield if you're having any trouble finding one. And don't forget, in order to reset any vendor in Diablo, all you need to do is head out into a into the wilderness somewhere, anywhere, and then come back and talk to the vendor again, and her inventory will be refreshed. Also, one of the most useful early game items is a belt with multiple rows. Your potions can have a bunch of rows, and if you have a belt that has three rows, which is probably what you'll find early on until around Act 4, which you'll maybe be able to get like a plated belt that has four rows, that can be immensely uh, quality of life uh, improving. On the topic of choosing skills, don't forget that it is only the hard points that you invest into your skills that affect synergies. So, for example, Glacial Spike here, which is affected by Ice Bolt, 5% gold damage per level, only applies to the hard points that you put into Ice Bolt. Those are the points that you spend 
not the points that you get as bonus from magical item. As soon as you hit Act 2, you're probably going to want to abandon your rogue mercenary and grab a nice Act 2 mercenary with a nice aura of your choice. Now it is important to note that depending on the difficulty that you're in, the aura thus named the same, will be a different actual aura. So the combat aura in normal will give you prayer, the combat aura in nightmare will give you thorn. So be sure that you're choosing the correct difficulty to get the aura that you're actually looking to get. The prayer aura, I quite like. It provides passive healing to you and your mercenary quite at a decent little rate too, so you can use less healing potions and just kind of have that nice passive healing tick going on. The Defiance Aura I also quite like as it boosts up your defense rating by a percentage, quite a decent percentage too, so if you're stacking armor this can really double and a half down on that, give or take, depending on your level. The Might Aura increases your damage on your melee attacks by a percentage. A pretty decent percentage as well, also a great aura for melee. The Holy Freeze aura creates an aura of cold around your mercenary and it can slow enemies down and also adds cold damage to your attacks, which can also slow your enemies down and add a little extra damage, also a great aura. The Blessed Aim aura increases your attack rating also by a decent percentage. And lastly, the Thorns Aura returns damage to the attacker at a percentage amplifier based on the damage received. Again, at a pretty decent return percentage. So those, uh, those are the auras for the Act 2 Mercenaries. <clears throat> pretty much most players, I think, choose the Act 2 Mercenary for their Mercenary Companion. There are other interesting combinations you might experiment with, but if you're just getting back into things, this is probably the most powerful Mercenary by far, especially when you consider the next bit. And the next bit is as follows, Ral, Tear, Tal, Soul, the Insight Rune Word, which gives you a level 12 to level 17, level 13 to level 17, somewhere in there, up to a level 17 Meditation Aura. What does a Meditation Aura do? Well, it makes all of your mana concerns go away. It recovers your mana at a ridiculously powerful rate. This is such a great item for spellcasters. Once you get this early on, and it's fairly easy to get, you just need like a four socket halberd and a Raltiratal Soul. Slap that in, and suddenly your mana regeneration goes through the roof. So, very powerful item. On the topic of very powerful items, next up we have the rune word that every caster is going to want to get. That is Spirit. Tell, Thull, Ort, and Om, two to all skills, up to 35% faster cast rate. Big ol' bonus to vitality and a huge bonus to mana. And so easy to equip, so easy to get. Crystal Sword only requires 43 strength. You might search a little while for a four sock Crystal Sword, but you can also just find a nice white Crystal Sword and socket it with the Socket Reward Quest, really up to you. But super powerful early game item that really belongs more in the end game, but hey, there it is. Speaking of faster cast rate, you may be remembering a little thing called FCR and faster cast rate breakpoints. Let's take a look at those really quick. Here's a one speed. Here's another. So the way the game works is that depending on how much faster cast rate percentage you have, you are either at a place where you have achieved the next level of break point, you know, the next level of speed, so to speak, or you haven't. If you're 1% below that, you'll still cast much slower uh, the previous breakpoint speed. So what casters will want to do eventually is study up where the faster cast rate breakpoints are and make sure they have enough gear to get them to that point. Head on over to d2cheatsheet.com and we have actually right at the top here some faster cast rate breakpoints. Now these actually vary depending on your class and skill. So if, for example, you are a sorceress, here are your faster cast rate breakpoints, 0%, 9%, 20, 37, 63, 105, and then all the way up to 200%. Uh, that being said, for the lightning skill, it's a little different. You have 0, you have 7, 15, 23, 35, 52, 78, 117, and 194. So this shows you everything that you need. Casters will, of course, want to find that sweet spot, that balance of gear that gives them the best possible cast speed so they can get as many spells out as possible and destroy as many demons as you possibly can. 
Through your travels, you will encounter uniques, super uniques, normal monsters, boss monsters, minions, and all sorts of variety of demons that want to kill you and also give you super good treasure. The champions and the uniques and super uniques drop much better treasure than the normal monsters do. And of course the bosses drop the best, but they can, you know, be a little bit slower to get to. And actually not all bosses drop the best best, but you know, that's another topic for another video. And don't forget that shift clicking, shift right clicking potions will refill your potions, your mana, your town portal tomb, your identified tomb, and uh, yeah, quicker and easier. Now, when it comes to gambling, when it comes to crafting, when it comes to horadric cube recipes, when it comes to budget rune words and powerful rune words, I have videos all specifically for all of these things, so I'm not going to cover these in this video, but check out my channel to see, to see those specifically and broken down into detail. The FHR, Faster Hit Recovery, helps you to recover more quickly from being attacked. Uh, this is useful for melee classes or any classes that take a lot of damage. Caster classes can avoid and kite a little more easily, but for melee classes up close and personal, these can be pretty helpful. To farm for early game runes, head on over to the Black Marsh and look for the Abandoned Lost Forgotten Tower. Forgotten Tower, that's what you're looking for. I almost forgot. On the fifth level of the Forgotten Tower, tower you will encounter the Countess, and she pretty much drops a rune or two every time you kill her. Uh, the ghosts inside the Forgotten Tower also have a pretty good chance of dropping runes, so for getting runes together for your insight and your spirit shield, this can be a nice, fast, easy way to do it, especially in normal nightmare difficulty. The uh, tower is actually quite a lot smaller than in hell difficulty, so you can find your way down all five levels actually pretty quickly. And don't forget, you can upgrade your perfect skulls, or rather your skulls, you can upgrade your gems, you can upgrade your runes by putting three of them together, and uh, you'll get the next version up. For runes, it's a little bit different. There's recipes on that. I'll make a video separate on all the different Horadric Cube recipes. But uh, yeah, just, just a little reminder, you can upgrade your gear in that Horadric Cube. Speaking of runes, always, always, always double check the order in which you place runes into your weapon. Tal, Thal, Ort, Am is not the same as Tal, Ort, Thal, Am. The latter will get you nothing. You have to put the runes into your weapon in the correct order. Very, very important. As far as leveling up goes, I kind of usually don't even worry about it. The game gets you to where you need to be. Uh, Nightmare difficulty starts to level you up very quickly, but if you want to do a little bit of bonus leveling, the stony field is a good place. Look for the road. The road will always lead you to the Tristram portal. Tristram portal. Uh, the Tristram portal has a lots of good uniques and, uh, and uh, champion spawns in there. And champion and uh, unique spawns uh, give uh, 300, I think 300 to 500% more XP than normal. So killing those can help to level you up pretty quickly. Plus you can potentially get some decent little early game loot drops. Where the hell is the road? Here we go, here's the road. So you find the road, you follow the road, and you keep your eyes open to the left and the right. It'll either lead you out of the area or it'll lead you past the was that it no or it'll lead you past the Karen stones boy this is usually a little faster but here we go there was the Karen stones so you blaze through Tristram you take out all the uniques and the champion spawns you get the sweet sweet XP you get a little bit of loot and uh, yeah, that's kind of a way to level up to around, let's say, 15 or something like that. For myself, I really don't bother with that because the game gets you to the level you need to be to just by playing through the quests. I don't really start to worry about leveling until the end of Act, uh, end of Act 5 uh, in Nightmare Difficulty. So there is a spot I actually really like to level up in Nightmare Difficulty Act 5, and that is the Frigid Highlands. So in Nightmare Difficulty, nothing is immune, so you just run on up. You kill these guys, Eldritch, Eldritch sorry, the Rectifier. These guys give quite a decent amount of XP. You quickly go down to Shenk, the Overseer, take out Shenk, and just take out like all of these guys super duper quick. Um, and then from there, you can head on over to Pindleskin, and take out Pindleskin, and not only can you find really good, well, pretty good gear to get you going into Hell difficulty, it is also a really nice fast way to level up. 
Um, yeah, you'll be surprised how quickly you level up there. Looks like my portal's not open in this difficulty. By the way, never get the waypoint for the Halls of Pain or your portal goes away. I have that on my previous tip videos, but just in case you forgot. If you find yourself getting frozen a lot, get yourself a nice raven frost ring. This prevents you from being frozen entirely, also gives you some mana and some dexterity and even some cold damage and attack rating. These are great actually for uh, Amazons. Also, don't forget that Magic Fine has diminishing returns on rare, set, and unique items. Here's the graph. I have that linked on d2links.net, so check out d2links.net. But anywhere over about 350% Magic Fine starts to get super duper redundant. Even 200 is pretty good. Somewhere in the range of 200 to 350 is kind of what you're aiming for to get a very good, well, kind of your upper ech echelon chance of getting uniques and set items and yeah beyond that you're just sacrificing clear speed for the most part. Early in the game gems can be extremely helpful uh, such as a sapphire which adds to your mana in armor by quite a lot. It can also add quite a decent amount of damage to your weapon and slow down your enemies with a cold attack whenever you hit them. Something like a ruby increases your life by a good amount so if you find a nice two socket helm or two socket armor and you drop you know, three, four rubies in there, suddenly you're up a hundred points of life in early game. You don't have that much life, so that's a lot. Something like a topaz increases your damage by quite a decent amount. Uh, so check out, early, check out early game runes and pop them into your armor. Don't be afraid to use them. Uh, you'll find a lot of them, and you can also find new socketed armor from Farah in Act 2 whenever you want to swap stuff around. Give it to your mercenary. It'll actually increase his damage by a lot before you get the... Uh, uh, before you get the insight poleaxe, you can pop some rubies and some sa uh, and some topazes, and actually even some some sapphires into his weapon. Then he'll he'll have a multiple fire, cold, and lightning attack. So yeah, lots of, lots of early game stuff you can do with gems to really up your power levels quick quickly and easily. Also, don't forget that when you're playing on Battle.net, the more players that are in the game, the more difficult the monsters will become, the stronger and more hit pointy -y they will be. Uh, they will also drop more items. They won't necessarily drop better quality of items, they will just drop more abundant supply of items, and thus the chance of getting something good increases as well. Alright you guys, I'm going to call it a break on this video. I think that's quite a lot of things. I'm sure there's some more. I also have, like I say, specific guides on different things also on my channel, so you can check out the more detailed explanation of those. Hope you like this video. Please subscribe. I'm going to be dropping more Diablo content, Diablo, Diablo, Diablo content every day. Uh, and I hope to see you all in Diablo Resurrected less than 12 hours from now. <laughs>